Skybox Not the JPEG in the sky But an actual box How weird And that is the wrong way Yes it is Yes it is Okay <laughs> Oh where am I even going Distracted by the marvellous skybox And now I no longer know Which is left, which is right, which is up, which is down the Floating rock is definitely getting closer though Hey, welcome back to the Let's Play for FIFA Gold. Brought to you today by myself, Lizzo, as it is every day. Assuming you're watching this channel and these videos. I don't think I've ever had a guest commentator. Well, not since the Majora's Mask LP, anyhow. Okay. I still need to go back and redo, I know, I know. We'll see what happens. I have plans regarding a Zelda game. But uh, I'm going to keep those to myself for now. Just, uh, just for now at least, anyway. Uh, which is the best way to go here? Probably this way. I mean, I could go back out into like, the main tower, but I still need to get over to the fire tower first. And the fire tower probably has a switch door, same as all the rest, which means I can't get from the central tower to the fire tower. So I'd have to go into the central tower, all the way to the bottom of it, through the dungeons, back out the secret entrance, which was in the Water Tower Garden, I think it was. And then I don't even remember off the top of my head where I'd go from there to get to the Fire Tower. So it's ultimately going to be quicker just to backtrack through these puzzles. And, uh... Because I'm pretty sure the Air Tower is, like, just adjacent. Well, actually, would it be adjacent or opposite? I forget mathematical terms already. In my defense, it has been... What? 10, 15 years since I last... No, not that many. Probably 12 or so years since I last used uh, trigonometry. Interesting, I still remember the words to describe things, just not the things themselves. That's uh, not all that. Oh, buggering hell. Still. Up yours. But yeah, that's not all surprising considering I am somewhat of a renowned word nerd. Not too bad about that, actually. I have eternity Got a pretty firm grasp well. of algebra. Which is surprising, considering how much I hate abstract math. The one subject within mathematics that I utterly despise, and that's the one I actually do best at. I don't know. Perhaps it's the academic equivalent of hate-fucking, I don't know. Okay, Garrett just did his own little hop for no reason. I didn't push the jump button there. I think the rock actually threw him into the air. I mean, does this game even have that kind of momentum-based physics? I mean, apparently it does, but I didn't realise it. Oh, damn it all. I was slightly too close to the door, so I'm going to have to fiddle around opening it up, reclosing it, and... Yeah. Oh, well. On, actually, speaking of locations, I'm actually going to have a quick pit stop and check to make sure I am going in the correct direction. Because it tends to help. Uh, Yeah, I can just go straight back across through the garden, and that'll take me to the fire tower, on the opposite side of the main gate. Okay. That's not too bad. I can handle that. And everyone should be knocked out between here and there. At least on this side of things anyhow, so I should be okay just to literally... <laughs> scared myself with that body for a second there. Should be okay just to take a little jog. There shouldn't be anyone else left. He says being overly cautious and hiding in corners, I know. I know. But there's one thing you all should know by now is that I'm a massive, massive hypocrite. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. I know. Like five minutes of purely backtracking and already I'm saving. Because no matter, I'll open this door and run face. Yep. I called it. Anyone taking bets somewhere or not? That's a bloody fire mage or 12. Not eager to find out what they do. It's bad enough with the others. Well, that's it. I don't think. Have I actually even seen yet what they do? Or am I just presuming based on experience in previous games? Well, future games. Yep, that's still a thing. I'm still going to keep getting the syntax of that wrong. Okay. Uh, which away, that away? Which away, that away? Who knows?
I've got messages popping up in the corner. You guys won't see this because of the way I've got the uh, setup going. I've got messages popping up in the corner. From uh, the lovely Miss Abavai. <laughs> oh. She enjoys doing this when she knows I'm recording. She'll suddenly decide that she just taps to talk to me about something right then and there. Just to see if she can actually distract me from doing it. It's a shame, really. If, we were, if um, she was actually in the room or some such, I'd deliberately turn the mic towards her. Just to mess with her. Hell, even if it was a, a Skype call, I'd do the same. But no, she's been sensible. She knows I'm recording, so it's text only. Devious little minx that she is. Right. Pop a moss arrow. Because I'm pretty sure we've not encountered cobblestone floors in one of these towers before. I might be talking out of my ass. We might have had them in every single room so far, I've just never noticed. Fire burns, water flows, earth shakes. Air farts, yes, we know. Uh, surprise! You go down just as badly as the others, don't you? Well, you seem to be wearing a tinfoil hat. Would explain why you look like a baked potato, I guess. I'm just noticing the uh, the nodules up on the walls, like lumps of lava as a lighting source. Interesting approach. I mean, it works as a heat source too, so that's an interesting approach. Yeah, nobody coming down the stairs. Seems to be a common setup, like one guard in the bottom room and then everyone else elsewhere. To Adept Alhir, Lieutenant Scar disobeyed Captain Regalio's specific orders and ventured into the Tower of Fire. He needs to say he was ill prepared to deal with the trials of flame and lava that await all entrance. The charred corpse was brought to the laboratories where it will be put to good use. The fire can cleanse us, but it is not for the commons. See to it that the incident serves as an example to the others. Archmaid Kamin of Ramin. How did you get taken seriously with a name that rhymes? I, I don't get that. But okay, I get the point, game. There are things that I will see the mages do that I cannot do. Which I, I kind of gathered that already, but I presume there's something a bit more specific to it. Or was that supposed to be warning me that there are trials? Because I kind of figured that out already. I've done the rest of the towers, I get this. There are elemental themed, like puzzles and traps and whatever else have you. But I'm not entirely certain to this day exactly how you know, using rope arrows ties into that earth puzzle. You know, the room where I had to climb up and down the different levels. Unless perhaps the earth mages could just make, you know, elevators of earth to get up around that or could like open doorways between the internet connecting walls or something. I don't know. Uh, okay. Hey, buddy. You're walking in lava. He's walking in lava. Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 there's something very disturbing about seeing a man just casually resting in lava. You ain't Shadow Man, son. You ain't got no gads, you can't be doing this. I kind of want to play that game again, actually. It's a really fun... I, I think Shadow Man's a really fun game. I wish I still had my N64 version. That was um, ridiculously broken compared to the normal version. You can speed run it. Well, you can still speed run the PC version, but it was more fun to do it on N64 because there were several um, changes to polygon count and hitbox detection that had to be made to account for the N64's hardware. That means there are areas where you can jump and grab onto nothing because there are invisible polygons sticking out. So, like, you can clamber up onto ledges and walls you were never meant to touch and just skip entire segments. It's pretty amazing to watch. Of course, the downside to Shadow Man speedruns is that 100% is pretty much the only speedrun worth doing, ultimately. Since the final fight of the game relies so ridiculously heavily 
on the idea that you will, and I mean you will, son, have collected every single last damn Dark Soul, and thus be able to kill the boss in only 12,000 hits instead of 14,000. Yeah. That's still no it's such a bizarre choice, it still annoys me to this day. Just the ridiculously large health pool they gave to Legion. I mean I sort of I sort of get it to emphasize the fact he is absolutely Shut up. He is absolutely a threat, I get it. I do. Ah. Can I only put one of these out at a time? The sound of an No, only I can. You shut up already. Yes. So, yeah. So I get the point to make everyone well aware that Legion is a definite, an unmistakable threat. That ow! Oh, okay. That burns very quickly. Duly noted, game. Duly noted. But yeah, it's um. It makes very clear that Legion is a, an imposing and extremely dangerous threat to the player. I don't think anyone really needed that emphasized. I mean, we got it, you know? It's just... Uh, how can I even put this? I, ultimately, I don't think I liked the way it was implemented, though. I think it was... Oh, for, oh, of course not. You know, sometimes you can catch them before they spot you and it's fine. But every now and again, that nonsense happens where they go into alert mode as you're swinging, even though it's in the dark and they shouldn't be able to see you. Yeah, was I even going with this? Yes. Yeah. Large hit balls make it very clear that Legion is very dangerous, he's a big threat, blah blah. But still, I think there should have been a way in-game to negate that. Like something you could have done in the boss arena itself, or an item you could have used to weaken his health pool, or... Because I mean, the way it worked out, even if you had every single Dark Soul and could do, you know, fully charged, maximum damage, shadow gun shots, combined with... Uh, I forget which of the particular voodoo weapons was the most effective against him, but even with all that going for you, it still took, uh, to, to quite frank, an utterly ridiculous amount of damage to put him down. Like, you could spend the better part of like 30 minutes or so on that one boss fight, and it wasn't even a particularly interesting boss fight, you just run around trying to get hit by the big blob thing and all its thousands of homing attacks. So you were just circle strafing and firing constantly. There was no particular challenge. It's not like, you know, you did a certain amount of damage, you then he went to a new area. Outside face. of the very first time. You know what I mean? I have... I have concerns about that implementation. I know that, as I understand it, it ultimately came about because when they were like right at the end of their design cycle, and that was pretty much the only thing left to go, they suddenly got... I think they got their release date pushed up, or... So, something happened to them that that final fight. The reason it seems rushed is because it was. Especially when you compare it to the intricacies of the rest of the game. <laughs> uh, I'm just laughing at messages. Never mind me. I know it's terribly rude to do when you're... Uh, supposed to be playing a video game and talking over it to be doing other things. I know. It's awfully bad of me. I'm also half paranoid these guys are all going to come flooding up the stairs after me. Because I really, really couldn't be doing of that right now. Or at all, for that matter. Ugh, got that lava nodule hanging overhead like an inflamed tonsil. Just kind of want to take a knife to it just to see what would happen. I don't know why I did that. That doesn't help me at all. Why did... Uh, I'm clearly not thinking clearly. <clears throat> he says double wording, which he hates when he does, and yet seems to insist on continuing to do. What is your patrol route, even? Like, which way are you going now, chum? I'm sure you were on the other side of the bloody room before. I shall build shelters from the winds, feel the countless waters, See the vast earth and burn in eternal fires. You know, it all sounds very good until that very last part, doesn't it? it? Sounds like a nice sort of, I don't know, like world tour trip, like a backpacking vacation or something. Right until you get to the last little section, 
It's like burning in eternal fire, so what? You finished your little tour in deepest, darkest Bangkok? Yeah, yeah, I know, I went for the STD joke. Sometimes you have to pick the low-hanging fruit. Maximum effect, minimum effort. Okay. I hear walking and clomping. Can't see anyone, though. A lot of narrow, twisting hallways. You know, this entire segment is actually reminding me rather heavily of uh, the Metal Age. Just like the general aesthetic to it, if nothing else. Which isn't a bad thing. I mean, ooh, okay, that was weird. I could definitely do with a little less metal grating. Because in this game, at least, the enemy AI is very, very sensitive to sound. Like, they will freak the f out when you're walking on certain surfaces, regardless of how far away from your, you know, you they actually are. In fact, I'm really certain one guy has already heard me, apparently. I can hear muttering. That might be the prayer they do, though. That might not actually be the, oh, what was that? Kind of a thing. Yeah, well, Earth? Thank you speaking, Earth does not shake. The shaking is the result of tectonic forces occurring when two pieces of earth are forcibly rubbed together. It's the result of friction, if nothing else. Yeah, take that, magician. I mean, oh, oh, for pity's sake. You mean you heard something? Or you heard something, if you want to go Welsh about it. Pseudo ye oldy speak. Convoluted poetic bullcrap. The darkness will not protect you for long. Well it has so far. You still don't know where I am. That's why I call Balderdash. Balderdash, sir. Uh. You know the more I spend you know my time looking into various old words and such, and the meanings of things and blah blah blah. I, <laughs> I know, it was an interesting time to do that. Um, the more words I come across that I'm just, I'm kind of disheartened, aren't in common parlance anymore. But you've, uh, well, just try for yourself, just how ridiculously funny it is to bring up a, world li a word like balderdash in just like a conversation. Well, when contextually appropriate, you know what I mean. Just try it next time you somebody says something to you that is nonsense. Try describing it as boulder dash. Trust me, it's a lot of fun. Even if only just to see their confused expression. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of little words that I um I want. To, I'd like to see come back. There are also a staggering number of words you start realising when you go looking for them that are technically still part of modern usage, but you almost never hear. I think the most recent one that I... well, I didn't even come across it, it was actually in a, uh, a novel Abifi was reading, was Impermanence. Actually, I've mispronounced that. It's a word meaning that uh, the speaker is referencing a lack of perception or a state of lack of perception more accurately so it's describing that whole business of not being aware of your situation in some regard so uh... Ooh. you betray yourself no, I don't. No! Really, you got to go work out a better tagline than this. Just tell me that I can't run away and that I need to come out. When quite clearly... Yeah, you don't know where I am and you've given up already. Where's my motivation here? 
Hmm? Tell me that. Where is my motivation? Going to the dogs, that's where it is. Yeah. So I'm gonna take a little. <laughs> uh, see, see, the good thing about playing stealth games I found actually is that it gives you ample opportunity to take massive slurps of tea in between breaks in the action. It's like I've played more action intensive games, and when you do it, very rarely do you have the chance. Is he gonna come all this way? Uh, ah, perfect. Very rarely do you have the, uh, the chance to actually drink and such while you're playing and commenting. I find anyway. But self games lend themselves marvelously to this entire thing. It's like while I'm paused watching a guard's patrol route, what I've got to do is, you know, keep moving the mouse with my right hand. My left hand is perfectly free to grab a teacup, take a drink. Then all I've got to do afterwards is remember to go back into the editing track, get a voice sample of the slurping noise, paste that into Audacity's noise cancel function. Voila. I can keep my voice perfectly lubricated, my vocal cords warmed, and my oration honey smooth. And no one's the wiser. And this, of course, I choose to pull back the curtain and uh, traumatize everyone by revealing exactly how the magic is done. But why would I do that? I mean, why would I do that? Okay. You know, these guys can have marvelous cardio. Again, I am slightly... slightly puzzled as to the point of the room, however. I mean, there's a large pool of lava, and then just thousands of winding, interconnecting stairwells leading around the room. Again, all I can really fall back on is the idea that being constantly bathed in all of this heat, and uh, well, probably sulfur as well, is somehow beneficial to their training. They're learning to re... Uh, I suppose in this case it would be learning to resist the heat and whatnot, is what they would be after. <laughs> to avoid fainting, you know, like that. But as far as I'm concerned, what actually happened? They weren't coshed. They simply failed in their training and fainted due to the heat. I mean, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Yes. It was like earlier when they were talking about the trials of fire and you got the random plates that heat up and whatnot. I get the idea would be that unless you had mastery over fire elemental magic, doing so would, you know, at the very least, ruin your shoes. If not, you know, burn your feet clean off. That's what they're going for, I get that. Even the dude walking in the dude walking in lava, that's pretty hardcore. That's, you know, I am so confident in my my abilities as a fire mage as I shall walk in lava without taking damage. Probably not that easy to do, actually. I mean, because even if you have the ability to absorb and... I don't know how it works. Would you absorb the heat? Would you dissipate it? Would you bend it around yourself? So you're not actually being touched by the heat? I don't know. Anyway, point being, that you've still got the lava is molten rock, so there's a heavy earth element component there as well, so it'd be like trying to wade through a pool of sand, it wouldn't be like walking through water as the, you know, it's portrayed in this game. So that'd be, that requires some pretty intense physical labour as well. But that's what the stairs are about, to improve their leg muscles to the point they can do this. Perhaps I'm just massively overthinking it. Probably the latter, but <laughs> it's what I do. Okay, did I actually cool this ramp down? Because I guess I did. Hmm. I'm still getting hissing noises though. Oh bugger it! It's just if I die, I die. Yeah, we're good. Like I didn't even touch that one. It begs the question, doesn't it? Really? Uh, that metal walkway is in the middle of lava. Why is that not too hot to touch? But these hot plates, for want of a better term. Those are. And they're not even touching anything hot, either. Can I seriously not get close enough to this thing to... I know what the game wants, it wants me to waste a water arrow. 
But does the lean function not allow me to get close enough, or does it not count? Yeah, I don't think it counts, does it? Because that's easily close enough to activate a lockpick normally. Ow, ow! To activate a lockpick normally. I guess the lean function only really counts when you're swiping stuff. You can't lean and you... Yeah, I should easily be close enough for that, but the game says no. How close I am for the lockpick mechanic seems to be determined on how physically close Garrett's central hitbox is. Not where my interaction box, the one of a better term, actually currently is. Okay. Again, you can sort of... I'm just paranoid now. How long is that going to stay cool? I don't know how long the effect lasts. I never stood there and actually counted in the end, did I? I sort of put things out and then ran. Which may work out to my detriment here. I say may, it's pretty much guaranteed at this point. I know I'm going to risk it anyway. I'm kind of hoping that this means it's more or less permanently put out. Ah, no, no, no it doesn't. Sorry, Garrett. Sorry. You know, I wonder if this means now that his shoes will make that horrible clanking noise. Now they're pools of molten rubber and, well, flesh. Now for the talisman. The talisman? That was a very weird pronunciation, my boy. But what did I pick up then? The treasure key. You are you are actually fucking with me, right? I did four towers of this bull crap for the key to where the treasure actually is. And where the hell is that? No, nope, still don't know. Right. I have the key to a treasure that I don't know the location of. And I spent the better part of what, an hour if not more? Getting that key. Like, the only place it could be is obviously in the mages' keep somewhere. So I don't know, perhaps I should be happy that I didn't go all the way through the keep only to find. So I then needed to do the four towers, but on the other hand, doing all four towers of this crap to then find that all I got was the key to the treasure, not the treasure itself, is... I don't know how I feel about this. Yep, yep. Uh, do I need to... Uh, I'm going to risk trying to drop onto the ledge and then I'm down onto the walkway. That's not going to end well. But what? Cause, uh, I don't want to go all the way back down to the tower and like up into the central spire like I initially intended. I might just go straight across and see where that puts me. I'm hoping that puts me in the central spire and not in the keep. Well, it probably will. That's not good. Yeah, just checking the moon was still there. Yeah. That was a lot further away than I thought. Good, I wasted one of my precious water arrows. Uh. Oh, fuck. I couldn't even see... He didn't even open the door, did he? He just sort of appeared in front of it. Unless I was so distracted I just simply didn't notice him open the door. I mean, somehow he didn't spot me, even though I was out in the open doing... nothing at all to disguise myself. Yeah, go to sleep. There we go. This is a bit of a weird game sometimes. It's like there are situations where Okay, that door de okay, I definitely saw the door open that time. What are you talking about? You've no reason at all to think I... Are you the guy from earlier? When I opened one of these doors, like, back on the bloody wall? If you spent the past hour still looking for me... Because I'm probably gonna have to call bullshit on that game. I've been... Yeah, I... Close that. I've been out of his line of sight for like the past hour, at the least. He should not still be looking for me. I think it's a weird way of how the game stores information. It's like, um... Where's he gone? It's like, obviously the game knew that that guy was alerted and looking for me. And then what I would guess happened is, that I went so far out... 
bullshit. No. Anyway, I'm guessing happened is I went so far out of the area that the game probably despawned him, and it probably amended like a little note with like um, his current status, which I'm guessing would probably include that he was in alert mode. So when I've come back into the general area where he's supposed to be, the game's respawned him, including activating all the stats he had previously, which includes the alert mode. I was spitballing here, of course, but I would guess that's probably what happened. That I probably left the area before he'd gone back down into caution or unalerted. And thus when he despawned, he was despawned with that stat still intact. Which is interesting, because uh, I wonder how much memory space it would have taken for them to include a system that says, like, once the player leaves the spawn area, and we despawn stuff to conserve resources, how much memory space we had to, like, have, like, um, the game keep track of how long he's been away. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want it to be possible for the, for the player just to run out of spawn location, and then immediately step back in with never everything reset to neutral. That would be too easy to abuse, but this is like the exact opposite. It's like a case of someone I alerted the better part of an hour ago is still reacting as if it's only been like 30 seconds since he last saw me. Which obviously is not true. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting indeed. I do have to wonder if my occasional use of the uh, infinite momentum glitch is quite possibly not helping my case. <sighs> Night. Okay. So I assume you're the same bloke from earlier. I mean, you all look the bloody same. <gasps> I know. I know. <laughs> That's Gardist. Oh. I do love that infinite moment. You know, after I finish this game, I might replay it, like in its entirety. Just seeing how badly you can break, like a casual run of it, by abusing the momentum glitch. Because, how was that? Oh, the door tried to close on me, apparently. But yeah, I imagine that you could probably do it like fling yourself across gaps the game doesn't intend you to be able to cross and stuff. There's a similar thing in um, Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. There's one of the missions in that where if you used maximum upgraded force speed, and I think it was only a normal jump, it wasn't even a force jump at the right time, you could like fling yourself across a huge chasm, hit the Raven's Claw, which is the ship in that game, uh, the player's ship, should I say more accurately, and uh, end the mission instantly because. The mission complete um, trigger is always active and is always present at the Raven Claws location. So all you have to do is fling yourself across the gap, hit the ship, and end the mission. You skip everything else out. I mean that's terrible if you were trying to find secrets and get special, you know, four star points or whatever else have you. But in a speed run? Being able to basically go, yeah, I'm not doing that mission. That's definitely a thing you want. Okay, don't think he's coming back. Uh, what time is it? Okay, I might actually um, finish up in attack. This has been a fairly long episode. This may, in fact, be the last one you guys get before Christmas, as a little heads up to you all. If it is, I wish you all, you know, many happy holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Marvelous Hanukkah, etc, etc. Suddenly the Blade Runner soundtrack is back. But yes. Um, and yep, yeah, enjoy yourselves, and myself and Garrett here. And apparently this guy. We'll all see you in, uh, probably in the new year actually. Because I'm going to take a bit of time off to do family stuff. And, uh, various other odds and ends. 
But yes. I hope you've all enjoyed yourselves. And for everyone here at the Lazocast, good night. Sleep tight. And, uh, see you around.